Hey guys, Serum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Rimax C2 in multiplayer in Forza Horizon 4, and apparently, because I have the Asphalt 9 decal on this car, it can do stunts. So today I'm in S2 class with a tune by Rock and Rolla 608, and the decal was made by Cytokine 1. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and let's get to our first race, in which we see Patton Newbot in McLaren P1, Meaty Potato in the Zenvo TSRS, Takustado in his back mono, Ardno in his CLK GTR, Adam in his 918, Lodica in his Quadra VTEC, My Little Huracan in his CX-75, Skipper in his Ford Supervan 3, Kevin in his 600 LT, and finally Shadow Reaper in his Zenvo TSRS. These are all members of my Purple Team Discord community. If you would like to be notified when I record these sessions, and maybe would like to be in them, you can join my Discord. The link will be in the description. If you go to the Special Roles channel, you will see an option for Forza Horizon 4. If you add that to yourself, you will then be notified every time I do a recording session here, and if you have this game, this is probably the easiest way to get into one of my videos. Although the past few times I've done it with the Yesco and with the Corvette, we had so many participants that I couldn't fit everyone in a single room. So generally what I would do is make two rooms, the first one with some races, the second one with some races, and then prioritize in the second room the people that didn't get added to the first room. So everybody who wants to join does get a chance. So let's talk about this Rimac. It is a decent Decently fast car. However, this comes with a bit of an issue. You see, it has a very low handling for being an S2 class. At this tuning, which I have is pretty much one of the best tunings you can get in this car, it only has 8.5 handling, and this is not very good. It leads to a lot of understeering in this car, so you have to often brake a lot harder than you would have to in other cars, or you risk skidding out. And so be warned, when you first drive this car, it will probably take a little while getting used to that, because in a lot of other cars, you don't have to slow down as much to go around turns. And so that was the biggest learning curve for me in this car. I did not get first place in my first race. But we did narrowly take the victory here with Takusto in his back mono and Meaty Potato in his Zenvo TSRS coming not too far behind. And now we are on to a second race in Greendale Super Sprint. As you guys know, this is probably one of my favorite tracks in the game just because of the big variety in it. You have some in the city, you have some in the country, you have some on the highway. Just gives a big variety to test a lot of cars. And so this is always one that I use when I'm making these races because I just find it to be a lot of fun. As you guys have noticed, I have definitely begun making more Forza videos again. Well, a possible plan that I have, and I don't yet know entirely whether I'm going to do this or not, but this is an idea, is to stream every other weekend instead of every four weekends, so basically doubling my amount of streams, and then doing in the other weekends a Forza video, because I do them at the same time I do my streams, and so I'd be doing something consistently every Saturday. I'm not entirely sure yet whether I'm going to do this, just throwing it out there. Let me know if you guys like that idea. And speaking of streaming, some people have asked whether I would will stream Forza. I do not plan to because what I do in these videos takes quite a lot of time to set up and like going in and out of the game and getting people in and everything and I just don't think it would be very good for streaming. I think that's better for just these videos here. Now some people have also asked whether I will stream for example Minecraft. That is more likely, I will say. Maybe I will do a Minecraft stream at some point, since I can run shaders at a high FPS now. I should be able to record Minecraft and stream it and have it look really good, so that's a possibility too, but for now, I'm planning to just continue streaming Asphalt, because it's what I feel the most comfortable with. But as I am trying to expand my channel in the videos somewhat, or at least have a greater variety throughout the weeks, I might do the same with my streams, we'll see. So we're coming up toward the end of this race here. Ardno has gotten pretty far ahead, and yeah, we're in second place though, and I was just afraid at this point. Usually at the end of the races, I was always afraid that I would mess up at one of the final turns because I wasn't going to break enough, and thus I would lose positions. Here it didn't happen, although I did hit the side. Ha, <laughs> yeah, that could have been pretty bad if I'd gone too far to the right there, just a little bit further that way. I mean, that's pretty much what happens a lot of the time in this car. You think that you're turning enough, but you're really not, because oftentimes you turning your hardest 
does not do enough. You just really have to slow down a lot more, which is kind of unintuitive in a lot of cases, especially toward the end of the races when you're really trying to get that speed to get that win. No, it's actually faster if you slow down more so you don't skid and hit the wall or spin out or miss a checkpoint, which I did a couple of times, I will admit. But overall, I had a lot of fun driving this car. People were telling me that it was going to be really bad. It's certainly not the greatest, and it takes quite a while to get used to, as I found out. But once you get used to it, it's actually pretty fun, dare I say. I mean, just as acceleration is quicker than every other car that I faced in these races, I kid you not, I could be starting out at sixth position and then just fly past the first five like it was nothing, which is not something that I can really do in many other cars that I've tested. Usually what ends up happening is I do a little bit of skidding at the beginning of the races, even though I have traction control on. It still happens sometimes, although I know it happens a lot more often Often if you don't have traction control on, as I found out through experience, and that's why I have it on. But this car, there's none of that. You just start going straight and fast, and so you pretty much get ahead of everybody in the beginning. And at that point, you just, you have to be able to remember to slow down enough for the corners. I can't stress that enough in this car that is extremely important and absolutely vital to winning races in S2 class with it. Now, I don't know exactly how good this car is in X class, but I know that most people don't really play multiplayer in X class. And so I knew that S2 class was going to be a more relatable class to test this car in and just to see it where you would most likely be using it if you were to use it in multiplayer. I don't know if I would recommend it for just straight up multiplayer. I know there are definitely better cars in S2 class, but I don't think it's at the bottom of the pile either. Once you learn how to drive it, which does require some practice for sure, you can do pretty well in it, as I found in some of my later races in this car. I got passed by Meaty Potato in his Zenvo around one of the final turns in this race, but I knew that with my acceleration and top speed, maybe I would be able to pass him. Unfortunately, I went a little bit too fast around that turn, hit the side, lost some of my speed, and unfortunately, it was not meant to be, although it was a pretty close third place. With Ardno taking the victory, as what happened in 90% of the races that I played with him. Now we're moving on to our final race, which includes Metroid Man in his Yes and Estenol in his McLaren 720S pre-order. This race was cool because it was kind of like Clash of the Asphalt Nine Kings, or what used to be. The Rimac isn't really a king anymore. I don't think it's king on any tracks. I believe the Tuatar and Yesco have pretty much killed it on all of them. However, it has been brought to my attention that the Rimac, when maxed, or at least five start or so, is going to be very, very good in multiplayer because its acceleration is great and pretty much all of its other stats at higher stars become definitely good enough to be very competitive. And now it's time for my general review about this car in Forza. So, its acceleration is very good. Its top speed is quite good. Its handling, not so much because it understeers heavily. Like, it just does not have a very sharp turning radius. I almost rammed that wall right there, even without meaning to when I was trying to turn as hard as I could. But if you practice enough with it, I think you can do pretty good with this car, even even though it's not the best. It's definitely not something to just never take out. That being said, it did cost me around 3 million in the auction house, so be sure that you have a pretty good chunk of credits lying around if you want to be getting this one. However, that is still much easier to get than if you were trying to get it in Asphalt 9 on Switch. That was a disaster. This track here is definitely not one that I would have expected this car to do very well on, given all of the turns and right there I pretty much skidded out. But the good thing about this car is it is actually a pretty stable one. You don't really spin completely out. You just kind of drift because your car doesn't turn enough to make it around the corners otherwise a lot of the time. And we come second to S. Null in this final race, the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!